what this is is a study session, so we need to have some debate amongst ourselves. And I guess my first question that I would like to ask is, how did you come up with the amount of hours at each location? Did you and hear Campbell, that? I'll let going to turn that over to Kim. I mean, it's similar reasoning, but she can then go into a little bit more on that. So what we did was we took a look at the circulation and the hours that some of the libraries had that have the enhanced hours. So we've got Ashland and Medford who have similar circulations. And so we moved Medford up to 40 hours. That also has been a request from the public. We also sent, in the last seven years, the overall overarching request that we've had is additional hours. So we, we moved Medford up to 40 hours. Talent and Central Point, again, are similar. Central Point is, was at 24. They have similar, they actually have more circulation than talent. We moved them up to 36. Road River and Eagle Point are in the similar circulation. Um, but the Eagle Point is a regional center. It's one of our larger libraries. And so we moved them up to four hours to 28, similar to Rogue River. Rogue River has the additional hours that their friends were paying for. Then Jacksonville, Phoenix, and White City, again, they're at a similar circulation, and we moved them. We left White City, who has additional hours that were paid for by White City Community Improvement Association. We moved Jacksonville and Phoenix up to 22, so those three would be at 22. And then Roos, Shady Cove, Gold Hill, and Applegate, another block of similar circulation. We moved them each to 18. Hours. And then we had Prospect, who is at eight hours, but has seen about a 500% circulation increase since we opened the doors seven years ago. So we moved them up to 12 hours, and then Butte Falls just a couple hours to 10 hours. And we also took into account the um, input that we've had from our branch managers and our staff and our friends groups. not at the last meeting, and so this may have been discussed. Can you hear me all right, Dana? Oh, sorry, that what? wasn't very clear. What, what, what was oh. the question? Um, so I, it, this may have been discussed at the last meeting. I don't know. I'm wondering what was the difference between the 58-hour and the 78-hour scenario? Was it because we wanted to reduce the cost? And who who decided? Was it was it? Kim and the management team that decided which libraries should um, have the difference in hours between the various models. So I saw a 78 hour model, 58 hour, 44 at one point when I was trying to catch up yesterday and today. I think as Kim mentioned, in the original proposal, you know, we, we, we looked at the scenarios of, of usage, um, staff feedback, uh, community feedback that they received over time and came up with that proposal with a original understanding the board was um, was wanting to see what for $500,000, what kind of enhanced service proposal would that mean? Um, then in the last meeting, uh, the discussion was more to come back with a proposal that would be more in the $400,000 range. And as I mentioned, if we were going to probably propose today, that's about what this proposal, what you see in front of you would be. And that's why I wanted to be sure, like I said, even though we're able to have some flexibility in the very short term, um, because of the situation the board's in and, and where we are in the contract cycle. So, but if you were to bid this, this would be, let's say, more in that $400,000 range. Um, and knowing where to back off, that's again where that same assessment of, of wanting to keep Medford you know, it, as a priority to get that up to Ashland level. Um, and then kind of flowing out from there. Because you can imagine it's, it's a very different cost to operate a library the size of Medford um, compared to a Rogue River. And so uh, in that first proposal, we were saying 
if, if the funds were available, these would be our this would be our recommendation. So now this is a little bit more modified version of that. Um, but sometimes there's other things to take into account. There might be uh, community needs that the board is more heightened to in, in terms of wanting to to ensure the way the hours are spread, for example. But from an operational standpoint, this would be our recommendation of where to put the hours. And, I, and Kim can add, add on to that as well. Okay. And Monica, um, you said that the, the table didn't really um, incorporate all of the increased costs since FY07, and you gave some examples, and I understand that. Um, but I also did notice that, that the table does um, reflect a 23% increase since 07, and um, I imagine then there was a escalator built in every year, like 3%, 4% a year increase in this four hour time block table, is that correct? Yeah, that's part of the county LSSI contract. Okay. Okay, so there is, it does okay. include some growth there. Yeah, and originally this contract, if I could speak, was written so that communities could come in and pick up additional services. And so they had the clause within the contract. And initially a number of entities did, but but since that initial time, no one has come in. But what we're, what I think, if I'm correct, is the LSSI is proposing that we use that clause within the existing contract, and they're saying they will honor it for costs, and you know, it would cost $284,000 to add 58 hours. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Six and months, correct? Kim, mm -hmm. I'm almost wondering, can you pull the TV a little closer to the group? I can hear, again, certain voices very well, but I just, I hate to be missing out on that, if that would, that would make a difference. Um, and again, even if it narrows my visibility, but it might enhance the, the volume feature here. The way I'm, I'm looking at this is, <clears throat> this is a one-time uh, potential cost increases. So this is one time for the second half of this fiscal year. At the end of the fiscal year, the contract with LSSI ends. Many things will be up for negotiation. And from my point of view, um, the budget committee will be taking a look at hours everywhere again. This, this um, is not precedent setting what we do here today, this is reflective of only what we would be doing for the rest of this fiscal year. And that's how I'm thinking of it. Is that how the other board members, is that how y'all are thinking of it? Yes. Officer Doty? I agree with, I would, yes, to that part. Okay. Okay. Did you hear that, Dana? Uh, no, I guess, are you asking is it, this is just a short term, I mean, from a, a budgeting purpose, this is more of a short-term solution and not precedent setting. Yes, I was making a statement, Dana, and asking if the other board members agreed with me and because I missed the last meeting. <laughs> and they, they do agree with that, that this is okay. for this year only and it's not precedent setting as far as the number of hours at any particular branch. Correct. And, and the board may choose to be even more conservative. I mean, I know there was a desire um, to have something positive happen immediately coming out of the shoes, but it may be even looking at this pr proposal that you decide to be a little bit more conservative coming out of the shoot. I guess our, our big piece is to make sure it could be, um, from a budgeting standpoint, sustainable in the long term, um, because what you wouldn't want to have happen is to hire a bunch of people get things up and going, and then in July with the new budget year, having to pull back, having to reduce hours, having to lay off people. And so I guess that's always our, our feeling would be to build with hopefully long-term sustainability in mind. Um, and this is more, a definitely more conservative approach than the first proposal uh, that the board had, so. 
does seem more sustainable to me. Susan or Carol, do either of you have specific questions about what the proposal is? Uh, I have a couple that I think that need to be explained, and uh, I, I think I know the answer after having my tour of the Rogue River Library is one of the questions that, that I had was the price per hour on Rogue River was quite high, and now I found out it's a larger building, and it was the regional um, mm -hmm. headquarters, and do you want to expand on that, Pam? Right. Um, we have four regional centers. One is Eagle Point, one is Road River, one is Ashland, and one is Memphis. So those have larger buildings and more space for staff. We're running at minimal hours now, but pre-closure, those were regional centers. They were regional reference centers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I the other issue that came up earlier had to do with computer technology. And am I correct in, in, in hearing that we're not adding an additional person and that LSSI within their initial contract would move someone around and the, the computer technology needs you think can be met within this budget? Is that true? Well. I think it's going to be, again, now more of an internal assessment on our side, Kim and I working together with the organization to figure out how do we successfully support this for the next six months. Um, so I can't, I mean, at this point, this proposal does not include, uh, you know, the solid infrastructure that we would normally be putting into place. But also, I'll also said, I mean, as a company, um, this could be something we, we, we may be adding in and, and try and just absorbing internally to make this a successful you know transition to this but but it is not um, as built in for example as a first proposal where we knew we're going to be adding you know these positions you know with Kim and I working together with the organization we know where some of these additional needs are to make sure we can support this um, but it's but you're right, it's not this 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 proposal does not have the infrastructure of the, of the first proposal, so that's something internally we'll need to figure out. Carol, can I ask a question, of Jill? Uh huh. Uh, Kim. If if we go with this, uh, if we go with this, I don't want to ask you a question, Jill. If we go with this proposal, do you anticipate that it would be able, we would be able to add some IT uh, per, uh, hours yes. based on what she's proposing here? Yes, I think we could add to sustain the weekends and evenings. Okay. This proposal is $284,000, whereas our previous proposal was $500,000. Previous proposal was for 78 additional hours, and this is for 58 additional hours. So this proposal, I want to thank you for sharpening your pencil on this proposal and, and making things uh, a little bit more palatable on the checkbook. More doable. Yes. Do you, you want to talk any, if, if we're going to spend any time talking about individual branch equities or anything like that, then the, this is the particular time that we should, we should spend a little bit of time looking at them. I think that we're constrained somewhat by the four hour block model and we're also benefited by the four hour mm -hmm. block model. You're supposed to getting a price break by going with this model. Um, I, we heard what was considered in um, arriving at the number of hours for each library. Um, Director Wolf and staff spent time with their priorities. I heard from friends that considered what the input they can get them throughout the years. Um, I don't think it's appropriate for the board at this point to be saying Oh, let's add two hours to White City, for example. Um, 
the staff has been doing that and the way this, this block model is working. Um, on the other hand, um, <coughs> next year, uh, for next year's budgeting, um, I think it's important to look at parameters other than just circulation. So understand this model is based on circulation and that that is a obviously one of the major measures used in libraries, but it's only one of a dozen measures used to consider um, public library use, as, as you know, and only one of the measures that's reported to the state library. So I think in preparation for future years, we can look at some of those other measures and and um, that those will come into um, play when we're looking at what hours for the libraries. <coughs> but I think we're we're pretty constrained by this model, but we're also benefiting by this model over the next six months. So that's my thought. <laughs> we can't be saying plus an hour or plus an hour <coughs> at this point. I think that's that's the approach that I would also take. That this is this is gets us closer to where we wanted to go in the short term, and I think over the long term, we should look at the whole system, not just go back and look at every, each library and the hours that all are open and all see what they should be for going forward. We didn't, we didn't have the opportunity really at the beginning to look at the hours that we, that we picked up in that the libraries had been open before. I think we should go back and look at the whole system as a system as we prepare to move forward past this initial year. I think also that um, we need to re revise the strategic plan. And I think during the, that process in the uh, public planning to revise that strategic plan, we can also look at hours and get public input and services and do a whole you know, study that can help us to move forward. I have a few comments that I made notes about. Okay. I think we have really sort of three options today that, that we could contemplate for the next time we meet. And the first one is to accept the proposal that we got get today because I think it's reasonably priced and it provides hours to almost all the libraries that are in need right now. <clears throat> and um, my only question about it is that it is, doesn't provide the farsightedness that we're all talking about that we know we need to have. The second option that I wanted to mention is that um, uh, Jill and I met with the county administrator, um, Mr. Jordan, to begin discussions about becoming an independent entity. And he suggested that we open negotiations now with LSSI for a new contract that we could have by the 1st of March of next year. And he gave us a couple of reasons why he thought that would be a good idea, including that we have reduced resources right now. Um, and he also offered to assist us with the negotiations because he's been through this process. And I liked his recommendation because I thought it would permit us to address um, the salary and wage issues that have also come up fairly often um, from staff and would probably further stabilize the library if we, if we did the, uh, a contract sooner than later, maybe a two or three year contract. I think that would be helpful to the staff. And then I think the third option that we have to contemplate is for us to purchase 20 hours now for Medford and possibly up to 12 hours for Central Point. Those are the places where I think there's the greatest stress on libraries. And, and then make a good effort to accommodate the needs of all the other libraries early in the new year. Seems to me we, we have some flexibility that we don't have to buy all the hours right now because we're, but the pressure is on for a, a couple of the libraries that are really under some stress. Are you advocating for any of those? I would be, I think I would actually be comfortable, I think I'd be most comfortable in um, 
uh, buying um, lot hours right now for Medford and Central Point and uh, taking the county administrator's recommendation and opening up negotiations fairly soon. It would probably not allow us the time that Kim is talking about in terms of the app. It might not give us the adequacy to do the strategic planning that you're talking about, but it might. It, we might be able to manage that. Um, but I like the concept of getting a contract in place sooner and having all of the libraries feel a little more stabilized than they even feel today. I think there's some real advantage in that, and and I I just feel that there's some wisdom in in proceeding with that. Um, but I I would be comfortable in pretty much accepting any of these options. And they're not ex they're not exclusive. Yeah. Each other. Right. Mm -hmm. Except the third one. It's different than accepting. Right. The, the third one is different. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So. Do we have any other comments about Carol's number of hours, which would be really on two branches versus the LSSI proposal, which is broader? Correct. I, I think okay. we've heard from needs and those of staff for more than just method and central point. Uh, so I, I would not be considering a third option. Well, I, I understand your, your position on that, but I also think that if we could do a really good job of, of updating our plans and really evaluating what, what really is needed on the ground out there, um, <clears throat> I think that that's not very long for people to wait. Some of these people have waited several years for things to improve and then get sorted out. Well, and again, I agree it's really important for the strategic plan that Kim was talking about. That's the opportunity to hear from communities mm -hmm. you know, exactly right. what they have and would like and the difference in, in days and hours. You know, maybe somebody right. wants a Wednesday night and somebody else desperately needs Saturday and that's not how lawyers are set up now. For us to um, go ahead and negotiate too early before we have that community input, I think would be a mistake. Mm -hmm. um, but, and, but also we all know that if we are going to have to start negotiating soon, there are, there are also many, there are other options too, and lots of information that we need to gather in this process. Well, certainly the strategic plan is not the only thing we have to deal with, but I, I guess my question would be how much time Typically, does that take strategic planning months? <laughs> yes. And, and I think prior, unless we could just say to the county, extend the contract for another year. If we thought that we could do a strategic plan and renegotiate a contract at the end of that. I'm not thinking that we would be able to get that all done within a fiscal year. Yeah, I, I mean, we could. I think we could have it and done hire by, an by the end of, and do a budget by the end of June. I think it's part of the budgetary process, so it can be part of the Yes, I agree. And the librarians only have a portion of that because we have the, a lot of administrative kinds of things that we have to work on too. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's not all their responsibility to take care of this. Right. So, as far as the strategic planning process, it's, I don't know how you do it here in class, but it's often um, it's proposed by the hire a contractor who specializes in that. Um, it's often a retired public library director um, who, who helps with that strategic planning process and can speed it up a lot. Have you done that in the past year? We did have somebody, um, Ron Beverly, our CEO, came in and helped us with a strategic plan. And that was the first um, strategic plan, I believe, that we had. Do we have one before that? But um, that was in 2010, and it, the strategic plan has been revised a little bit, but it ends 
at the end of this fiscal year. So, and I think the strategic plan that we have is solid, but it needs to be revised because it's been five years. I don't think we have to throw it out and start all over again, but, but I do think we need to bring the stakeholders back together and get public input from users <coughs> and non-users and go through the process. One thing there are, are oh, sorry. I would say there are a lot of um, consultants, experts, or um, public library associations. You know, mm -hmm. As Kim knows, I'm saying this for mm -hmm. board members who might not know that. Um, so, as far as how many things we can get done in one year, just trying to reassure. Well, I was just going to say that I also um, went through and did a uh, and of course, it's not accurate. I did a percentage of growth, um, and so I. And of course, the libraries haven't grown an equal percentage every year. It's, it, it's it's one of those, you know, like this rather than like this. But but I think that that is also very important information for us to look at in the future, in terms of seeing where the growth spurts have been, when li where libraries haven't grown, and try to assess why they haven't grown as much. Is that measure only using circulation? No. This Wait, is, what's the growth function? Oh, this is using circulation. But yeah, you see, absolutely. there's so many programs that are happening here. And I know that that takes a right, lot of time. It's another, another measure to consider. It's exactly. Exactly. A program attendance and in library use, use of electronic resources. This problem with circulation is only measures checking the book out. Well, um, <laughs> okay, so let's go back to our enhanced proposal. Mm -hmm. Do we have enough information as board members that at our next meeting, after we take public input, that we could make a decision? Do you think you need more technical input from either Kim or from Dana to make a decision? That's what, this is what a work study session is, is getting public information and getting, getting the technical details. Do you think we have that information? I'm gonna go but, with Carol okay. first. Uh, the old, I would love to have additional input. I would love to have a better sense of how the libraries perceive um, their growth in programs, programs and in outreach because I, I think that those are really key pieces to this. And if we could get anything that would help us see this better or differently, or to be assured that you've taken all of that into account, not just circulation, I would feel better about that. But, um, but that would be my main interest. I, I, I see this as a much bigger picture than circulation, our population. Monica? So, um, a technical question to the camera, Dana. Um, the annual cost per weekly open hour chart from 07 um, through 14 15. Jacksonville, Rogue River, and White City were double asterisked with a note. These libraries were paying for extra hours prior to closure. LSSI took these donations into their account in the proposal. Therefore, operation costs for these libraries were proposed in their entirety to keep the donations the same for these groups. I'm not exactly sure what that means. <laughs> Do you know them? They use the and does it? No, LSSI is in their proposal take into account their the donation. Mm -hmm. The number of uh, LSSI is, um, the, the county's paying for the remainder of that. So let's say Jacksonville would cost um, $11,500. In the proposal, the county's paying the difference between $11,500 and the $7,263 because those communities were paying that amount grandfathered in is not the correct term, but. And then they looked at the total, then LSSI looked at the total count with the block cost. For those same. three? 
But you're talking about paying attention to what the communities could afford, right? That what was, the communities that was, were already paying, yeah, yes. And, and what they thought they could pay. Right. So there's nothing that's happened since the election that would change those numbers? Okay. Just want to make Not sure those so. And I'm very appreciative that, that this latest proposal really takes those things into account. That helps us a lot with this initial budget. You're not taking public comments, I know, but in my mind, what Mr. you Marks, said... No. Mr. Marks, do you clear. understand study session, sir? I'm not Mr. Marks, but I do understand. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Is there any other questions that you guys have? about this proposal that's in front of us. Any other, do you want them to look at different hours arrangement? Do you want us to look at different um, proposals in any way? Well, I, I listed what I would like to have right. in addition in terms of helping us in feel that we've, we're making a good decision if we approve what we've received. Today. I would like clarification on what you would want. What, I mean, what would you, programs, what, you want to know how many programs each branch well, that I'd are like attendance, or what, and how would that relate? I'm, if I were to do this exactly, what would I be doing? <laughs> and, I, and I wanted to give a question, because mm. um, there are statistics that show the number of programs that right. each branch, mm -hmm. so we, yeah. those are compiled for us. Okay. I do understand that, and I do understand that they weren't brought to this. As far as I know, they were not brought into this decision, that we, this proposal that we received today. And I would, what I would say to you is just to kind of, you don't have to be bringing us like a big, heavy statistical report about this. I would just like to get a sense of how you see where some of the hours would, that we're buying would go toward outreach versus heavily into program versus keeping the buildings open. The, this proposal, Dana, you might want to come into this too, but this proposal is for just opening the doors and staffing the hours. There's not, it's not a proposal for additional outreach or um, possibly some additional programs, but not, that's not filtered <laughs> into this. So let's clarify. So what we're getting, the 58 hours would be keeping the buildings open more. And we would be assured, though, in the, of the 368 hours or whatever we're paying for total, that we would have at least the programs that are in existence now would be sustained. Correct. Okay. I would just assume um, rest with this proposal as it's made and sort of focus any additional information gathering that we might do toward whatever ongoing program we want down the road. I, I think we have a lot on our plate and I don't, I think this satisfies me at least for the the unfairness charges I heard about when we decided we would pay for the additional hours that have been present in some of the branches while the other branches have been left out. So that would sort of solve the equity problem in the short term, give us the opportunity to do the planning that we need to see what sustainable budget we can come up with in the long run and give us a chance to look at the contract options that we will have going forward. Um, I think March would be exceedingly optimistic in terms of trying to get a contract, a contract in place. I don't want to rush this contract. I want a good contract and I want to make sure it's something that we know we want. So. 
to me, a proposal like this doesn't need to be perhaps as fine-tuned as I would want if it were going to be where we were going forever, but it's not. It's to get us to June, to the end of this contract, by which time hopefully we will know where we want to go down the road. So I'm happy with the information that supports this. And, um, I, I see lots on our plate for the future, but I'd just to put this to bed so that we can get on with the rest of what's on our plate. So are you, are you guys happy then, or, or I you feel like you have enough information that we can have a public hearing about this proposal yes. at our next meeting? Yes. So uh, that's our intent, is to have a public he hearing, public input on our enhanced services proposal. And as it stands right now, we will leave it at the 58 hours, which was LSSI's last proposal. And that will be what we'll put on the agenda for the next. If that's true, let's move on then to the next agenda item, which is to talk about our future agenda. And I wanted to speak a little bit of what we have for our next meeting, which is this public uh, um, hearing. hearing. And then we have to review the policies that Susan and Monica have been uh, mm -hmm. working on. I've asked Lisa, and we hope by that time that she can come and talk to us specifically about some of the capital outlay. There's a $250,000 line item by capital outlay. We need to talk a little bit about uh, what our priority is to do this year or whether we want to postpone a portion or not of, of that. And uh, they, they're having some preliminary engineering done so that they'll know some costs more specific. And if it isn't done by that time, we'll have it at the following meeting. Um, one of the things in talking with Lisa that I found out, and I've asked her to do a short report and report, is there are some donations on hand that are at the county level that have been paid in the past. We have the right to direct how they be they could be used. We could leak them when they're sitting in the county's carryover fund. And so I've asked her to detail us, telling where they are, what are the requirements, when they have to be spent by. One of them is uh, like $80,000 of only capital for this building, for the Medford branch. So we need to know a little bit of detail about those additional resources that we did not have in our mind. So she's going to just do a listing and tell us about those. Um, we'll also have our financial statement for the first quarter. And we'll uh, let Lisa present that. And uh, the other thing we need to talk about, perhaps, is setting a second meeting date and time. And we need to have a discussion where we think that's appropriate. We have had special meetings every month. And should we just reserve a date that they would normally be on so people know in advance for your own personal planning as well as for the public's planning. And then we have minutes and I've asked um, either, and I don't know if Kim knows this, but the foundation, the friends, or uh, the LSSI staff to do a little more uh, update report at each, one each quarter, one, once a quarter, a more detail of what's going on. For example, she might be talking about teens and the teen library services. And then the following uh, months, we'll have something talking about the friends and what the friends are doing. And then the following one, maybe the foundation. But each quarter to have sort of a few minutes of detail of what's going on within those supporting organizations. For, for someone like me who've been around government, but not specifically libraries, I don't know a lot about the Library Foundation, and I need to get up to speed on the Library Foundation. And I think we all need to know a little bit more about those wonderful supporting organizations that we, we have. So those are the, the things that I have for our immediate agenda. And on that, we also have future planning. And I'm trying to put together sort of a six-month out agenda look That'd be great. And so that we can all sort of uh, you know, if you're saying just do this strategic plan, uh, where are we going to do it? You know, we got to work s some of those agenda and do some planning on a, you know, where are we going to be from now to June 30th? And whether it requires us to have another sort of goal setting session or something like that, 
so that we're all on the same page as far as those things, maybe that's what we'll want we need to be doing as well. I'd like for us to talk about whether we need a part-time staff person. And you want it on that next agenda? I think we, if we're going to be talking about future planning, I think part of future planning is see if we can find a, at least a part-time, high-powered person who can help us with some of the jobs that we have to do. And, and, and I understand, uh, and we've been advised by the county that it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. And how do we do that with balance, whether we have a discussion around the whole LSSI contract issues? And so, I, because, I, but anyway, I, I, I think it does need to come up, and I'm not positive how we'll want to have that discussion. So, is there anything else that people want to have some discussion around? Uh, well, do you think the library would be ready to give us sort of a timeline for the strategic plan as part of this future planning thing that we're going to build? We're going to be building sort of a tree, it sounds like. Uh, I don't think we would be ready to be asking the library to do that quite yet by then. Okay. So do you're we talking about the, uh, the administrative of this thing that we're supposed to be building this district. That's why I want to put some, I uh, have a staff person considered. You have a job yeah. description for a like, staff person? I'd be glad yeah. to write one. <laughs> well, I don't know. We, yes. we need to have that discussion yeah, on right. it. Or we need to have meeting. a draft okay. to work on. Okay. I'd like to yes, do some more planning before we create the job description for the person. Okay, so what you're talking about, so are we talking about we want to organize a strategic plan or do we want to have a day we set aside and do a planning, you know, have a facilitated planning day? We need that. And do we, I think we might need it before we do the job description, before mm -hmm. we make things? We need that. Okay, so are you willing to think about our October calendars and could we organize that oh, in October as our second meeting in October then? Or we can look at our calendars yeah. later, yeah. but would that be it's something? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it would be a good <coughs> idea to get. Shall we send you our free days? No, you need to go into your Google Calendar and update it, and then we'll have it on the calendar. That's, it won't be hard for me. Okay. <laughs> I don't have very many. <laughs> okay. Anything else we want to put on our future agenda? We got a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the first week in October. I think this is a long enough list. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty full, isn't it? Yeah. Expect our next meeting to take a little bit longer. Do we have anything else that you want to bring about in our future? If not, we'll stand up there. Um, to by anyone? That's my concern. I don't know what has or has not happened on that part. Well, I, well, I think, think that means that it hasn't happened. It was, okay. It was <coughs> low with you as backup, right? So Maureen agreed that she was going to draft the responses for the legal women voters and circulate that to us. Mm -hmm. And um, and all and there's been virtually no mail except for the things that Lisa sent us actually about six weeks ago yeah. and i don't know if they've been responded to well since we haven't yeah. seen anything email i assume that we we haven't gotten anything so more. let's put that item back on the next agenda yeah. it yeah. isn't an item for this agenda we'll re-talk about it at the next time okay okay is there anything else 
we probably should tell the public to be very patient. <laughs> Can I, may I respond to the, at least, okay. I think two emails that we've received where pe people have been kind of asking us, I don't even remember exactly what they were about, but to say we're getting our house in order about responses to these things, and please be patient. <laughs> I mean, I can go through and do that to those that are in my inbox, but I'm not aware of what's in your inbox versus what's in mine. Well, we all went, know that. Okay. 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 Lisa okay. sent them to all of us. Okay. I just think it's very rude not to reply at all. Okay. It is. And we've had no other, we've had no recent mail. Because Maureen told me that before she left, and I picked up the mail. Today. And there's some, there was a, 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 a hours proposal which we can bring up at our public hearing this next time. Okay, I hadn't heard about that. So are you going to respond? I'll respond, with, oh. I'll respond in a general right. way. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And okay, you, and at least an acknowledgement. Okay. Did the responsibility go What? Did the responsibility go to the There has been no, we, we, we haven't no received a draft from her yet. Okay, I remember, we, we talked about that. Okay, no, anything no. else? Um, yes. <laughs> so I saw one from RDT. Yes. No. Okay. So I'll read it from Jen. And then we'll get it back in generally. Yes. I guess I'll do it for my questions. But Jill. If we haven't gotten a draft on the League of Women Voter question, somebody else needs to take that on and start drafting because we don't have a lot of time before we meet with that. Actually, Monica, I have some information. So, Mo and I talked with Mary Lou Schnoes, who's right here in the front row <laughs> after the meeting last time, and it was kind of a heads up for questions to be thinking about before the uh, meeting that we will have with them in November. Mm -hmm. Yes, in November. So uh, it actually does not need to be responded to in advance. Right. Right. Oh, okay, good. Right. That's good to know. Okay. The meeting stands adjourned. <coughs>